so officially hello and good day to everyone very nice to see you all uh welcome to the sixth uh, belgrade legal theory group event in this year um i have the honor to present today our dear friend and colleague damir banovic from the university of sarajevo uh he's going to talk about uh naturalization of legal theory uh as uh, the last part of the series of events that we've talk about, talked about in uh, the previous meetings. Uh, so he's going to talk about his, basically present his uh, latest book called The Realist Theory of Law, Studies on Legal Realism, uh, Conventionalism and the Naturalization of Law. Uh, it has been published and Damil uh, will tell you all about it uh, during the lecture. Um, as per the rules, as usual, we have 30 minutes for uh, the presentation and another 30 minutes for discussion, uh, which is especially important today to, to stick to the time frame since uh, there is a faculty uh, council session at six. So I guess that's just about enough time for it. Um, without further ado, Damir, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Sava. Thank you, my dear friends from Belgrade and um, other places. I don't know where uh, our Ju Juliet. I don't know in which country are you and the others. So over or all over the globe. Um, and thank you for inviting me to present uh, some of my results, which I actually put it in a maybe quite wide, uh, wide um, topic: realist theory of law. And somehow I narrowed it because I put it as um, research in, a, in, a, in within the area of legal realism, conventionalism, naturalization of law. Um, this is something I have been somehow I have started actually with uh, with my PhD. And the name of uh, actual title of the PhD was uh, contemporary social legal theory is a critic of legal positivism. So somehow on the basis of this research, I somehow moved um, a little bit further. And uh, changed, so to say, the title changed from the social legal to realist theory of law. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, uh, I wanted to somehow to move uh, from the notion of social legal uh, because I don't want to uh, to be to be misunderstood as something as a sociology of law. Um, it is, in my opinion, um, legal theory. So uh, legal theory, which is inspired by some uh, social science research on naturalization and law on, or similar, uh, similar, um, for example, ex experiment experimental philosophy, etc. So I wanted somehow to move it from the social legal towards the realist theory of law. And there are also a couple of reasons for that. Uh, some contemporary um, legal theories, for example, Brian uh, Tamanaha, Brian Leiter, they also use this some coin the realist theory of law. Uh, and I'm going to actually explain what I think under this topic and where my research goes, so to say. Uh, so first of all, um, I mean, I'm, this is basically the, somehow my introduction to the topic. And I'm going to explain why real theory of law, um, on which tradition I base this. This is tradition of American legal realism and actually how I move towards something which is legal conventionalism and naturalization in law. So like maybe three areas in which I try to um, to put some methodological steps towards research within the law, which should be, in my uh, mother's opinion, naturalized, so to say. Um, so there are different, um, so, I mean, um, realist, when, it, when you talk about realist theory of law, um, it can be, uh, it can be, um, actually, we can understand different names and different approaches, so to say. So uh, I can't say um, that there is one unique approach when we, when we say a real theory of law. Uh, there are different approaches and different methodologies and also different names. So there are, for example, soci sociologically oriented legal theory, uh, sociological jurisprudence, which uh, was used by, for example, Roscoe Pound, sociolegal legal positivism used by, in some of his works, Brian, Tamana uh, Brian Tamanaha, and later he turned to something which is the realist uh, theory theory of law. Uh, there's also name title, so to say, law and society approaches developed by uh, developed by uh, Dennis uh, Galligan. 
So I just want to be clear that even though I use this term realist theory of law, it's not one unique one, one way of understanding what um, or um, somehow how we should uh, relate uh, legal theory with something which is social sciences or, or experimental philosophy or cognitive uh, psychology. Um, so sometimes people misconfuse, I think, with the sociology of law. I think it's different because it's um, more still <laughs> intuitive, even though it, it tries to be more uh, realistic. It actually proposes some uh, methodological direction, but actually it doesn't, it doesn't um, I mean, I don't do any any kind of empirical research or do uh, or other real legal realists, so to say, or realist theoreticians propose something which is uh, which is um, I mean some some kind of surveys or uh, empirical data on ways how to collect empirical data. This is something which should be done, I think, interdisciplinary or, or multidisciplinary. So I think still that when we talk about realist theory of law, it's uh, in my opinion, theory of law from the little positivistic or or um, uh, social legal something, but it's still it's still um, uh, theory of law, not sociology of law. Uh, so, um, where where do we start? Actually, in in my book, I've started with something which is a tradition of American legal realism, um, and there is also. I mean, we usually understand the American legal realism as a critic of, um, of uh, traditional legal theory or conventionally understand legal theory or theory of education, etc. And this is position from which I start because, uh, in my opinion, American legal realism uh, has shown something uh, which is um, some of the problems with the contemporary or um, traditional, so to say, traditional legal theory. And this uh, critic has uh, can be directed towards different parts. For example, uh, critic of the nature of law, critic of the methodology, which is mostly interpretation, problems with, with the education, uh, adjudication, etc. And somehow, in my book, I've started with the broader conception of this critic and narrowed it towards this something which internal critic and external critic. And this internal critic, which actually I take from that and, and uh, further develop, is something which um, was developed by the American legal realism. And this is one direction, so to say, of understanding this, um, this critic. And the other one is ex so-called external critic, uh, which criticizes law as such, not just, um, not just, just methodology, but usually uh, sees law uh, in one dimension. Uh, for example, uh, if you are talking about uh, feminist uh, legal theory, they uh, criticize law as the uh, domination of, of uh, man, or if we um, see it uh, through the queer legal theory, it criticizes law as the um, patriarchy system, etc. I mean, in in my uh, proposition for the realist legal theory, I I do not take this external critic. I only take this internal critic and the, and the position my my theory within something which is external critic. Why I call this internal cr critic? Um, because it still states, it actually accepts um, that there is some special domain called law. Uh, there are some problems within the or traditional or maybe contemporary legal theory. And uh, points uh, the problems, it actually shows which are the problems within the, within the legal theory and tries to more more to, criti to criticize not that much to uh, to improve it but shows which are the disadvantages so to say disadvantages of the of uh, legal theory and i think this this was the good starting point to uh, move a little bit further into um into something which i understand but what's uh, uh, uh what's um, realist uh, theory of law so this is so to say my my starting point the second starting point, actually, the the second uh, uh, premise or hypothesis, whatever, is this. It's quite famous. I mean, it's quite not famous, but it's like uh, widely accepted that there is something which is dual nature of law. So one, it's normative. Second, is uh, social nature of law, usually expressed in normative thesis and social thesis. Um, and then, if you accept that there is some something as a dual nature of law. 
normative something which contemporary or traditional legal theory uh, has the tools to explain. But the social thesis is something which I'm much more interested in. So from this dual nature, I take the parts which can be sort of, sort of say, uh, naturalized in, in my later research. So uh, I start from this second part of the dual nature of law. So the, the second nature is um, uh, the law is the matter of social fact or what law is, is the matter of social fact. So if this is something which is widely accepted by among the contemporary legal positivists, it's something which we um, intuitively accept. But what does this mean? So my, uh, my question was how we should understand this. So I'm not talking about the nature of law, I'm just talking about what counts as law. So principle of legal validity, so to say. And uh, if, if we accept, so one, one coin of this side is if we accept the Kazenian notion of the uh, hypothesis, which I think it's um, one thing on one side good, but also it doesn't say much. I'm thinking more in this other direction to accept it as a as a social fact, but if we if we accept this as social, what does this mean? I mean, how should we approach um, in understanding this second part of the law law's uh, law's nature, if there is nature? Yeah. And I'm actually extrapolating this part. I mean, I'm more or less neglecting this normative side of the law. I'm just I'm just ex, ex, uh, taking this second part, part which is um, uh, talking about the law as a social fact or the social sources of, of law. Uh, so first of all, at the, at the beginning of, of, of my presentation, I already told that I started with, um, with this critic, internal critic. So there are some points from which we can start this critique of the educa education, nature of law, position of judges, etc. But then uh, my question was, um, can we um, start from something which is traditional analytical philosophy? Is there some parts from which we can um, uh, develop further? There is, of course, um, I mean, in, in, my, in my PhD and then after in my book, I've uh, somehow come up to, to the conclusion that Kelsen is not is not the place to start from as Hart is actually the pay, place to start from and this is this famous sentence which he says that his endeavor in, in his concept of love that his endeavor is actually essays and descriptive selfish which actually doesn't mean much um, some of the research actually has shown that um, this was based based on the Weberian uh, theology of law but this is not so much important but for me, it's much more important this um, um, the nature of of some rules. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's quite known that he has started from this um, uh, theory of practice uh, pra uh, uh, practice uh, practice game of of uh, theory of practice the theory of games. Somehow, in his postscript, he uh, has modified um, some some of his approaches towards to um, coining this um, uh, idea of some norms as conventionally accepted. So, what which norms are conventionally accepted is is uh, so we if we ask ourselves, um, and the conclusion is, and he has, actually in his book he he says uh, rules of recognition. So rules which actually uh, um, uh, make criteria what law is in one in one uh, jurisdiction, and this idea of conventionally accepted social rules is something which is quite important in my opinion for the naturalization of law, and actually combining something which is conventionally accepted towards something which is naturalization and con legal conventionalism. So this is this is something from which we can start uh, a little bit further. There is a sec uh, third position, uh, but Anta Manahenis' general jurisprudence uh, um, developed something which is, um, I would say, the most abstract um, uh, conception of law. Uh, Brian Tamanaha has been known as someone who advocates for a realist theory of law. He has coined this in, I mean, different ways, realist theory of law, sociolegal positive, general jurisprudence, etc. 
And his last book is actually, in the, he proposes something which is really a real theory of law. Um, and he actually coins something which is the most abstract definition of law. He says that law is whatever has been conventionally accepted as law. So still we have this notion of conventionality going through from the very traditional little positivist towards the uh, from uh, in, in in some in work on sub legal realism realist as well, but towards this something which is um, uh, social legal conceptions of law. So there is this conventionality somehow uh, pervades um, in in their work. Um, but this, the most, this very abstract conception of law doesn't really say, says much because it's too abstract. I mean, what does it mean if you say the law is whatever uh, has been conventionally accepted as law? Why I think the Brian Tamanas work is, is important is important that it says that law doesn't have any na inherited nature and function. Because if you accept this premise that um, whatever, um, that law is whatever has been conventionally accepted as law, then logically uh, perceive that it doesn't have any nature or a necessarily function that doesn't mean that it doesn't doesn't perform any function but the sorry to answer this question um it's possible only if we see how the law performs in one particular context and he says we have to look at see what what law is so we, it's, it's a very heuristic model. It's not really methodological, but it actually cleans our head, so to say, towards understanding what law is in one particular society. Because it's, this is quite abstract, or maybe too abstract, we have to make it more concrete, so to say. Uh, and my, so to say, task, I mean, my text, I, 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 I oppose my task, I actually oppose to myself this as a task, how can we uh, continue from this abstract notion of what, what law is towards something which is more concrete? Taking also the, the results from also Hart, from uh, contemporary social legal theory, but also from the conception of legal, legal uh, conventionalism. So my, my question was to answer, um, uh, is law a matter of social convention? So we have this conventionality for the conventional accept social rules when we talk when we talk about the rules of recognition in the work of art. We also have this idea of con conventionality presented in the work of Pram Tamanaha, but as, as a general definition. But in my opinion, legal conventionalism in the work of Andrei Marmor gives us something which is an analytical tool towards something which can be naturalized, so to say. And even though it has been criticized whether the rules of recognitions are constitutive conventions or um, regulatory conventions, it has been generally accepted within the um, legal convention that there are conventions. Why is this important to understand the rules of recognition and constitutive conventions if you accept Andrei Marmot's position? First of all, is it constitutes legal actors, official which actually officials which recognize something as law. If we uh, re uh, so somehow relate that, for example, in our jurisdiction or jurisdiction in, the, in Serbia and in any other countries, we can actually see that there are MPs, for example, in parliament, judges, state officials, etc. The second position, which is also quite important, that if, um, if we understand rules of recognition as, as constitutive conventions, uh, helps us to understand the rules of recognition as social rules, social rules, like something which we create by practicing and also which has been accepted by, um, by relevant, uh, relevant community. So there are a couple of aspects of this, of this, of this idea. Uh, and then the last point in my book is actually, if we accept that rules of recognition are social conventions, and social conventions are actually a matter of social fact, what should we do with this? So if we accept that there, that law doesn't have any nature and that doesn't perform any, any, any necessarily functions, the only question maybe we can answer is what counts as law in, in one jurisdiction? And in order to 
to come to this conclusion or uh, to research this is to accept and research what are social norms, e.g. E uh, constitutional conventions in one jurisdiction, which actually create law or recognize, uh, recognize what's law in, in one particular uh, jurisdiction. The next step on the, on the last step, so to say, is to na naturalize uh, this idea of const constitutive conventions. There are a couple of ways how we actually can uh, naturalize something. This is very, 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 very uh, brief, so to say. There is a substantial way and methodological way. Substantial way means that we should naturalize all legal concepts, for example, responsibility, rights, duties. And the st second is methodological sense that we should apply methodology of other social sciences when talking about law. I have somehow um, 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 rejected this idea that uh, all parts of law can be naturalized. Normative can't be naturalized, but social part or social part of its nature, if there is nature, uh, can be naturalized. So this idea of naturalization can be in a way, for example, which has been done by sociology of law, for example, in the idea of effectiveness of law or efficiency of law, but also it can be in uh, understanding what rules of recognition are. So if we if we try to naturalize this social fact, of course, if we accept that it's a social fact, then we can understand better what counts as law in one particular jurisdiction. This is, I mean, this is practically, I mean, this is my proposal. It's not, it's not something final. It's open to discussion. But the idea is the parts which, which of law which can be naturalized to so naturalize it through either social sciences, natural sciences, for example, experimental philosophy. And uh, some articles which have been published this year in 2023 show ways of we, how can we naturalize some concepts, for example, intuition in law, or how we understand how common citizens understand law, or how um, uh, state officials actually understand what law is, or actually people who create law. Uh, so these are, I mean, this is something su summarized, so like these premises. So first premise is rules of recognition are measure social fact. So what kind of social fact? So rules of recognition are social rules. So we have to ask ourselves what kind of social rules. Um, so there are um, uh, conventionally accepted social rules. And then if you want to move a little bit further, Rules of recognition are constitutive conventions, mostly developed by the Andrei Farmer. So we have come from this something which is social fact over something which is constitutive convention, but still it's social fact, and of course one one type of social uh, social um, social rule. Uh, of course, constitutive conventions have two aspects. One is external. Uh, there is a social rule followed by people P, something which can be so observed externally. And there's something also we can uh, observe internally. So there's a set of reasons why people follow rule R. Both of them can be naturalized, for example. So, uh, I mean, if we uh, combine, of course, so they, they can be different sets of reasons why people actually follow rule of recognition. Of course, relevant community. Why are the, why, for example, are, in my opinion, why constitutive conventions are, are good methodological way so we have started from American legal realism, this critic. Then we have continued to, um, to see uh, places in uh, contemporary or traditional, I always say so contemporary, but also mean tradition, analytical jurisprudence, in which there is this idea of conventionality. Then we come, then we have crossed the way towards the social legal or legal uh, realism or real theory of law, which says that there is some kind of idea of conventionality, and then to put it more concrete into this idea of constitutional conventions. So something which is quite abstract, something which is which is more concrete. So constitutional conventions are, I mean, the place where we actually can um, uh, see what what are officials actually, so we can categorize these officials in uh, in one jurisdiction, for example, it could be MPs, judges, administrative officials, uh, who actually accept something which is social rule of recognizing what law is in one in one jurisdiction. So what are uh, what are the ways um, of um, 
understanding or actually naturalizing uh, rule of recognition. First of all, we have to accept that something um, non-essentialized conceptual flaw, meaning that um, that law doesn't have necessarily functions or doesn't have any nature. But truly, what can be um, researched is this idea of what what counts as law in one jurisdiction. The second step, or it can be either way around, like third can be second or second can be third. It, it haven't I haven't uh, made this clear. Um, clear path towards this research. It's naturalizing the rules of recognition throughout experimental philosophy, empirical studies, mostly I would say empirical studies, social sciences, replace natural substantial natural. Those are different ways of naturalization. We also have this analytical framework, which is constitutive constitutive convention. So rules of recognition are constitutive conventions. They're a matter of social fact. If they're a matter of social fact, um, there's something which can be found in, in the real world. The other part, which are normative parts of the law, can't be actually naturalized. And then creating or recreating concepts. So maybe after this research, or if you research what's what's um, what are uh, rules of recognition in your jurisdiction, maybe we will come out that there is not only one, but maybe several contradicting rules of recognition in one jurisdiction. And that's actually one of the one of the ideas to see if we perform in uh, in uh, one of the one of the actually conclusions can be: uh, Do we perform under one rule, one of one system for rule of recognition, or are there more confl maybe conflicting? Uh, and to understand um, not law only theoretically better, but also to understand it more. In a, in a... Uh, this is very summarized and very simple, well, more a simplified um, version of of uh, my book, which is um, happily or not written in our local languages. Um, but I mean, um, if there are some um, parts which uh, are less, uh, I mean, if, if uh, I haven't made it clear, please, um, I'm open for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damir, for the excellent presentation. The uh, topic of the book is truly quite wide and it's impossible to fit it into a 30 minute frame. Uh, so that's why we have now time for the discussion and hopefully deepen the questions that you've um, opened. So the participants are free to ask. Please go on if anyone wants to add a comment or pose a question. I could start if no one uh, or Julieta, uh -huh. okay, go on, please. Well, hello, thank you very much for the presentation. I found it really interesting and I also find the idea of your book a very interesting one. I have three questions, uh, three brief questions. Um, one question is about uh, if you have considered within this realist theory of law that you're trying to construct uh, the works of the Scandinavian legal realists, mm -hmm. and in this sense, uh, in which, um, because when you were trying to um, analyze the idea of reconstruction, reconstructing the concepts as they are used in practice, for example, or realism in the sense of trying to not go into idealism in a wide sense, for example, I think that one some of them would say that some uh, methodologies of legal positivists today are quite idealist in some sense. So this is the first question. The second one would be um, when you talked about law's dual nature, mm -hmm. I thought that you were referring to Alexi, but I think mm -hmm. that that was not the case. No, no, I know, I know, I know. But Alexi, yes, yes. Alexi, when he's trying to think about this, he thinks uh, in this dual nature about this ideal dimension mm -hmm. of law. Obviously, he he talks about this ideal dimension of law in the sense of this pretension of correctness. But then this is something very um, similar to Ra's uh, pretension of uh, legitimate authority. And I think that this uh, does part of the ideas that maybe people have 
about the legal system that can be uh, seen as influencing in some sense um, their acceptance, for example, of the rule of recognition. So second question. And the third one is very brief. Why not Kelsen? In the sense of you said that you arrived to the conclusion that maybe Kelsen was not the best way to undertake these. Um, but mm -hmm. for example, there are some there are some people that consider Kelsen to be quite a realist. Like for example, Paulson in the late Kelsen or Pierluigi Chiassoni. And I think that in some sense, with the last methodological steps that you were trying to advance, I think that in your book, I think that Kelsen serves for this purpose. So I would like to ask you um, more about the reasons why you consider Kelsen it was not useful for this. Thank you very much. Uh, just to ask, how are we? Uh, with, uh... Well, it depends on you. If you want to answer now, it's fine. Uh... Huh. Um, actually, um, why I didn't use, I actually I didn't use Scandinavian legal realism because it was more towards psychological understanding of law, um, and I wanted somehow to put this argumentation in line with um, uh, Hartian legal realism. So legal realism, Hartian, Hartian, then uh, influencing on uh, the Brand Tamanaha, Brand Tamanaha, Brand Latin. This this kind of of way of, of argumentation. So this uh, Scandinavian legal realism actually didn't fit much in the, uh, in in this line of argumentation. Maybe it was quite. I mean, it was also maybe selected, but um, um, ideas which was uh, developed within the Scandinavian legal realism was really much of my um, were not helping me much in uh, in and this sociological understanding of law wasn't really of. Um, um, of my of, of help, maybe the later versions are much more, but the the uh, uh, so this uh, earlier versions not so much. Um, I forgot the second question. I mean, I wasn't using. I was using this uh, uh, Tuzé's um, idea of uh, dual nature in one of his papers, and I um, and I quite. I mean, why? I still think that there are some parts of law which can't be um, uh, naturalized. This is this normative part, but this this, um, um, uh, this part which is social can be, or I mean, I mean we can still maintain this very intuitive idea of this um, laws, social reality, or intuitively still. Uh, talk about it, but why not to naturalize and see what's what's happening there? But I, I, I think I forgot what was the the second question. Uh, when was um, can you just remind me? Yeah, absolutely. That I thought that you were talking about Alexi when ah, you mentioned no, no, no. the dual no, nature no, no. of law. No, no. <laughs> now no. I know. Okay, and why not kill Kelsen? That's 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 quite interesting, actually. Um, um, I mean. If I if I read 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 it correctly or read it correctly, um, there's I mean um, uh, within the uh, Kelsens there's still this uh, it's quite uh, idealistic picture of law, not idealistic in the sense that it's good, but it's quite idealistic in the sense it starts with this hypothesis, which is quite logical hypothesis, and uh, I mean that's it, you know, I mean it's quite close system. There's uh, this. Uh, um, Hauptnor, which is logical presupposition, and you can't do it much with that. Um, I mean, I, I didn't see the 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 where can the place where the legal theory can be improved, because if you accept that is is something which is legal presupposition, that's it. I mean, if you either accept it or then you don't accept it, um, it has to have some kind of logical structure, and that's it. Uh, I mean, in his work, of course, he emphasized. Uh, I mean, you can see this influence also of um, of um, idea of uh, idea of education or importance of sociology of law, or import. I mean, he also wrote on on, on some of uh, legal realists their work, but still, he I think he has. I mean, in my understanding, he think. Uh, he kept this idea of duality, 
so sociology of law or uh, one side and the legal theory is on the other side they're quite important i mean sociology of law is quite important but still it doesn't you don't see this this idea that can you can combine this and then i think this idea of social social uh, uh, rule of recognition or rules of recognition social fact is a good place to see what's happening in in jurisdiction when it comes to the idea what law is or what law is not in one jurisdiction as a possibility to naturalize i mean intuitively i think i mean for me still um heart is better and then all of this work within the uh, starts with the john searle with this idea of uh, social constructed reality then conventionality then legal conventionality etc I think that uh, somehow logically for me um, um, makes more sense to start from this towards the naturalization. But I think, I mean, that's that's good. I mean, maybe I should think about it, Kelsen, more um, because uh, I, I, I was quite sure that you can't. <laughs> but thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if I can just follow up with a question. Um... It regards mostly the idea of naturalization of hearts, uh, rule of recognition. Uh, actually, when Ben Priel was the guest lecturer uh, here at uh, Belgrade Legal Theory Group, he uh, touched upon it, uh, upon the question, and we've talked uh, throughout the discussion a bit more about it. But I would like to hear what's your take on that, since um, the idea is the following. If uh, the rule of recognition encompasses the uh, both external and the internal aspect, the point of view, and Hart defines the internal aspect as um, some sort of a cognitive critical stance of the officials towards the rule of recognition. Uh, we are immediately in the field of, of attitudes of something psychological in a sense. Uh, and Priel argued that, uh, in general, Hart refuted the naturalist approach towards the rule of recognition, um, since the idea is that um, human behavior is purposeful, it cannot fully be adjusted to uh, the methodology of, of natural sciences, the idea of causalization and understanding what uh, is cause and consequence, and that, you know, reason, language, logic, and something which is characteristic for human behavior uh, makes it hard to implement such, such a methodology. Um, so I would just like to hear your comment on that. Um, how can we actually neutral, uh, uh, naturalize the, the rule of recognition in its internal point of view? Uh, is there truly a way to overcome uh, such a possible tension between uh those two ideas um i mean my proposition is we should try um to see if i mean if we can um i mean for example if we put it this that as a set of reasons why do we act i mean um why can we actually uh, conduct something as a survey to um, to see why people act in some way even though I mean, maybe there are some uh, methodological obstacles, but even though we can't, I mean, this is just a proposition. I'm not, I'm not really sure if this is, uh, this is possible. This is something which should be done. Uh, the problem with uh, with this is it should be done multidisciplinarily, so to say. So we have to, you have to combine different methodologies to see is this possible or not. Uh, but if if there's no way to um, somehow to come to this conclusion or, or to, to set some kind of methodological steps. This is something, for example, can be helpful from the soci sociology of law perspective. Let's like see if this is possible. If not, then then try to have this external perspective to see if, if this is possible. If it's not, then maybe we, then we should <laughs> probably should stay where we are. So this this idea of naturalization, just a proposition to see if this is possible. So I'm some, somehow throwing the um, uh, throwing the bone towards something which is multidisciplinary work or interdisciplinary to see if this is possible or does this make any sense, so to say. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not sure still. So this is this is like the the last part of the book when I propose this, and this is something which should be somehow um, uh, uh, elaborated further. 
I mean, there's mm -hmm. some works in within experimental uh, uh, um, philosophy, like recent work. Also, um, I mean, um, um, where this kind of things have been done, for example, in Brian Leiter also wrote wrote, uh, wrote some this and some some of uh, I think in his in his article um, uh, legal realism. I think I'm not, I'm not really sure where he actually um, uh, elaborates, actually shows the results uh, from um, from the sides of cognitive sciences or cognitive psychology. Um, for example, there has been work by, by uh, Marek Jakubies from the uh, Krakow University also, uh, but naturalizing from the cognitive science, uh, science uh, uh, point of view. So there is some work there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I mean, in my further work, I'm going to try to see is this possible or not, or should we modify this idea of naturalization of mm -hmm. the rule of recognition? Yeah, I mean, to me, it seems quite plausible to say that uh, the methodology of social sciences, for example, for example, through, uh, let's say, interviews, which could give us a glimpse into what the officials actually think of and what their reasons for uh, conforming to, to the rule of recognition are. I mean, perhaps Jules has a counter argument for that because she agreed with Priel. Uh, because of some interpretive or hermeneutic part of uh, the mm -hmm. recognition, but of course, you know, of course. I mean, there, yeah. but I mean there are these obstacles which we're gonna probably. But I think this is um, this is for me it's quite plausible, logical, like to go towards that direction at least when it comes to these rules of rules of recognition. Mm -hmm. why, why not to try it and see if this is possible? I mean, survey or. Um, interviews or uh, uh, this is something which are, I mean this is problematic with the with the lawyers I mean we are not skilled in I mean I'm not skilled in this so this is something we should be done with uh, together with the social scientists to see how to combine something which is from the legal theory perspective and to see it how mm -hmm. to combine it with the social science perspective to so see mm -hmm. this are this um, I mean can we match so to say something which is our analytical tool or should we like stay on this in the sense like rule of recognition concept of convention and that's it, or we should uh, move a little bit further, which is our actual understanding of what counts as law, and to to uh, see if social sciences or experimental, experiment, I mean we all, I mean we all, we, this this notion experimental philosophy, so it's not final, so to say we are just experimenting. Is this possible, and mm -hmm. to see if uh, can we get something from that side i'm not i mean i'm not sure um for me it's quite plausible um and and i'm i'm also quite happy to see if there are some critiques or like holes in these concepts and thank you for for this comment also yeah. uh professor dragica uh, hello damir it's nice to see you uh, can you please explain uh, a little bit more this notion experimental philosophy. What is experimental and what is philosophy in that experimental philosophy? In in, in this uh, experimental uh, something which I mean um, this book is going should be published this year. I mean final book should be published this year. Is something for example um, uh, we test uh, if we say a uh, false concept of law. So if that which which is something part of legal theory, uh, we test what what does this mean among the average people. So with surveys, interviews, or if we um, within the legal theory say um, that um, people obey law, what does this mean? Obeying law, how they understand these concept concepts, and then within the surveys, it's, I mean, even though it says experimental philosophy, it's more experimental social science, I would say, much more than philosophy. Uh, this is something notion which I actually I took from the, but it's more social experiments within the social sciences, so to say. And to see, um, maybe we, I mean, um, or for example, if you say that rules of recognition should be accepted by the officials. So what does this mean, accepting? So how they understand this? Why do we accept this? What are the limitations of the uh, power? Is there real some kind of real or just uh, ideal idea that there is something which is constitution or um, this idea that there is some kind of limitation of their power? Um, 
so they test this these ideas within the uh, I would say more social sciences and cognitive psychology and social psychology um, that's my that's my um, there's it has been done much but there's some work within this and um, I, I see that this is a space of some of some experiments which could be done conducted uh, from the side of, of legal theory um, I mean, maybe at some end, we're not going to be able to combine these methods, but uh, we're going to be informed. So I think the lawyers should be also informed what people think of law, why they obey law, why, um, I mean, is there some some rules which actually enable, uh, which creates law or is not? Are there political parties which actually create law or not? I mean, something which is more related to our context like this parliament which is actually creating or not creating law or it's actually political parties or the head of, of the state even though constitutionally is not so that's that's actually um, uh, so i would say it's much more within the uh, cognitive sciences um, neuroscience also uh, so yeah um, thank you mila um, uh, hello so Damir, I really enjoyed your presentation and I like the initiative about uh, doing surveys, about testing the hypothesis of, about what our officials think what law is. I think, uh, I think that like especially Balkans are like really good ground for doing that since there is so much difference between the practice and what is what it ought to be or what should be on the paper. So it will be like really interesting to see this conventional understanding of laws but i have a question regarding so you mentioned at the beginning of your presentation internal and external critics so american legal theorism is internal one and your theory as well and then we have external criti critics for example critical race theory feminism legal theory etc so what would be the difference so if, mm -hmm. if uh, what would be uh, like you're mentioning empirical studies in your theory as well so it's not that you don't have any empirical data in your theory so why is it internal and not the external thank, uh -huh. you. thank you mila uh, and also thank you drag i forgot to, to also say hi because i was more concentrating on <laughs> answering and, and saying to hi to, to all of you um so external um i mean this is something which i have um Dragica is more aware of this because I wrote this article on clear legal theory. External, I say, because it completely denies the idea of law in sense in which we legal theorists or lawyers actually understand. So it actually, it says law is ideolo ideology or uh, serves the purpose of um, interest groups, domination of women. So it doesn't see law as we see it. Uh, but this internal critics, it's actually, it accepts law as, as we understand it but criticize some internal aspects of it, predominantly uh, the idea of uh, adjudication. So he criticizes it. That's why I have positioned this as external and internal critic. Uh, I mean, if I have accepted this external critic, I, will, I, will, I would have gone towards the something which is, I mean, um, critical legal studies, critical legal movement, feminist studies, or, uh, Real legal theory or uh, race theory, which actually criticize law from the outside, saying it's it's actually its way of domination, which is also a good perspective, I would say, also to see if a law has this kind of. But this internal perspective is actually still accept that there's something idea of law and something which is theory of law, and that the law has as 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 somehow a special, I mean, a special domain if we can understand it, so to say. And critics like points like, ah, this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem, how we should deal with this. And then it continue, I, mean, I have continued this critic like towards the slow rules of recognition, ah, maybe we could maybe approach differently a little bit to see it. I mean, we have accepted that there are some rules of recognition, but we don't, don't know the content of it. So I think it's very important for the, our jurisdiction. We have somehow accepted that like judges, they create law or, um, there's this idea of, of really this research which has been done and also within the sociology of law, but we haven't um, um, researched this idea of what counts as law, or, or, or how do we understand this part. We have just accepted the rule of recognition, idea of validity of Hauptnow, Grundnow, etc. We know that it exists in the constitution, but let's see how it's in the, in the practice. Yeah. 
Thank you, Damir. Um, as far as I can see, there are no further questions. Uh, it's we've sticked within the time frame, so thank you very much for that. And thank you for the great uh, presentation and everyone for the discussion. It was a pleasure. Um, the next Belgrade Legal Theory Group meeting will be, if uh, I'm not mistaken, it will be in person at the faculty um, at uh, uh, on 10th of May. Uh, we will have uh, Jacopo Martire, but you will receive the necessary information via email in due time. So thank you once again and hope to see you soon. Thank you also for inviting me.